Good morning everybody, Victor here. And I am out on the boat with Brookie. But this isn't her boat. This is actually Patrick's boat what right up? there. What's good? I'm gonna plug all his stuff in the description box below, but Patrick's actually a really neat character. He's got a couple YouTube channels. I've never been described, uh, described as, a, as a neat character. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Victor. He's a day trader as well as a fisherman. He's got two YouTube channels. I'll have them linked below and an Instagram. And check this boat out, guys. This thing is just freaking beautiful. He's got sea deck everywhere. He's got a badass tower up there with a radar and just all decked out. We're actually on the new river right now and it's kind of neat. It's like a very urban area. This is what downtown Fort Lauderdale basically looks like around me and you see all the boats and everything over here. We were just waiting on that train bridge which I've never been on the water where you're waiting for a train to go up so you can get underneath it with your boat. It's pretty neat. So a little different uh, scenery today. We got the kite rods, we got live bait rods. We're gonna put up both, try to get into some king sails. Got a live well full of gogs and pilchards. Let's see what we can make happen. We got out here and it is an absolute washing machine. <laughs> it's big. It's we got soaked on the way out here. We got two kites up right behind me. We got Brooke working one, Brandon the other. And we just had a king cut us off on one of these baits. Oh, this just went off. Okay, well that's to be continued. So we started our drift pretty deep in like 200 feet. And as we get in shallower, you're gonna start to get into more kingfish, generally. The deeper you are, you get a lot more sails and tuna, but as we work our way towards like 90 feet, we should be into a lot more kings. So uh, we got some beautiful water out here, a little bit pretty rough, but we're trying to make it happen. Oh, 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 far bait, long bait. There we go, we're on. 170. Feels like a little tuna or something. This is uh, deep bait or fluorocarbon, uh, 12 ounce lead. Man, you were made for YouTube, Brandon. <laughs> What's the GPS coordinates of the spot? They can tell that. That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> there was a guy on Facebook trying to sell coordinates to weed lines. What? Yeah, yeah. People were like, how much? No way. Coordinates to weed he lines. He said he would fly his plane around looking for weed lines and then tell people exactly where they were. Oh, I actually seen that type of stuff. I'm <laughs> like, dude. They do yeah, a lot. Weed lines float. Definitely either uh Oh. Oh. Uh, 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 she goes. Pulled or cut? Cut for sure. Toothy. He's a toothy one. Oh! oh Woo! -hoo -hoo! On the dubs. Oh! Oh, that, is that a third one or is that the That's second one? one? No, oh, right here. Short. Right short. 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 Give me your camera. Give me your camera. Of course. Let's go. Ew! Yeah. The YouTuber's getting it done. Let's go. Check out this. Pop him. Yeah, on that one. Pop him. Woo -hoo. Yeah, wrapped on his bill. Yeah. He got him good. You guys ready to release him? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. You want again? Yeah. That's a sale for sure. Nice work, nice work. That was insanity. What we do is like three sailfish in a row. I think we got hit on both kites. Mine never got glued. This rod just got hit. We got like three fish in a row and that's usually what sailfish do. They'll travel in packs, especially on big winds like this. They'll kind of just float with the waves, but we got one to the boat. Not bad. 
I have to get lines back out. One of those ones that out. we lost was giant. Did you see yeah. that far? That, that far was... one was huge. Hook back. Hook was in it. That's why he spit it. Never got hooked. Check it out. South Florida goggle eye. One of the best baits you can fish out here. So we got a mixture of rods out. We got the kites, which obviously they they stay up top. What is going on here? What bait is that? It's in the rod holders. Oh. So we got a mixture of baits. We got some flat lines, we got deep rods, and then we have two kite rods out. And the kite rods, you got three baits on each. So if you kind of imagine your boat is like a, like a floating bait pen, right? You have, you got to maximize your opportunities because you see you'll get into a depth and all those fish will be holding in there. So you want to get on as many fish as possible at once, especially when you're tournament fishing or something. Oh, that's sick. Come on, eat it. Rick's got a sailfish on the short right here. Pretty cool unmuted. He stood up at the end. Right there, guys. Right on that little orange bobber. There's a sailfish. He's still right there. Whoa! Oh! Let him choke it down. All right, real tight. All the way, really fast. He's gonna pop the clip. Real, 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 real. Keep real. Woo! Back, back, back. Keep really, keep really. There you go. Oh, good. Wah, He's wah, right there. wah. Right there. I'm good. Well, we're certainly uh, no shortage of bites today, but we have missed quite our fair share of fish. Woo! What you got? It's going straight down. It might be a nice block. But... That was on the long? Yep. Walk back this way. Two There's next... fish everywhere. It's fish apocalypse out here. I guess uh, us old YouTubers know how to catch fish. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to say anything, but I mean... I think he's trying to call himself not a fisherman. I'm trying to say I'm a fisherman, I can't catch fish. I'm a YouTuber, baby. <laughs> There's always a joke going around that YouTubers can't really fish, especially fishing YouTubers, which I find funny. And we got a little bit of help with Brandon, but let's be honest. I mean, every bite has been on my kite rods, you know, my Probably setup. Better off without me. <laughs> <laughs> we could have been straight YouTube, but you know, I've got Brandon just for a little extra help. Moral support, really. Yeah. You, fi on. you fish professionally, don't you? I do. I fish for a living every single day. Oh. There he is. Woo! Deep bait. That's a king. That's got wire on it. So. Nice. There's gotta be right here. Feels like a snake. Coming in quick. Brooke, Brooke will get the gap. No, I got Bob. Right here. Inbounder. What do you call that move, Brandon? Hey! <laughs> whoop -whoop. Look, Look at that little guy. guy. He was just about as big as the gog was. Yeah, literally. Send it back. I don't want him. Play release. Send it back. Fly the king flag. Meanwhile, we got mystery fish on over here. Nice black thing. Yeah. That was the most. Can you see that gap? Oh, we uh, saw it. That what? was the most legendary gap <laughs> shot ever. Bro. The tail. He was like, no, 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 I don't want to. That's a tuna. <laughs> Butterball. What do you think? It's beautiful. Solid. Are you thinking of recipes already? Oh yeah. Look, he's okay, beating he's himself out. He oh. swallowed that yeah. thing. I'm still uh, mesmerized by that gap yet, shot. <laughs> right, right off. You start seeing things out here. That's what the problem is. Like, uh huh. Is that a fish? Is that a fish? Every little shadow. Oh yeah. Every little splash. Baker's yeah. been hearing birds all day. There's not <laughs> even a bird around. He's literally like, oh, where's the birds? When we're out here kite fishing, I don't know if you guys can see it on the screen, but those little orange bobbers, they mess with your eyes so much. But you're basically staring at that bobber all day long and your bait's right underneath it. Or if they start freaking out, like you'll see that your bobber will really start scoping one direction or the other. That's usually uh, your bait getting real nervous trying to some away from something. You already got dinner. You got one tuna in the box. Yeah. What are you gonna make? What? We got any special requests? I don't know. Something. Let's get crazy. You know. I something like it. That you've never like ever done, but just really push the limits here. You know. That's my kind of cooking. Yeah. We on. We on. Brain in the back. <laughs> oh, I completely forgot, guys. So if you enter the uh, the Dexter knife giveaway. Somewhere on the screen here, I'm gonna have all the winners' names listed. So if you guys see your name or know the person, the username, 
then go ahead and message them, let them know. Email me at uh, teethtv at gmail.com. I'll have all the info linked here. But if you guys enter the giveaway up on the screen, I'll have the information. So you guys see that uh, weight right there it helps to get your line down and you just break it off. Treb. Treb will hook right in the top of the mouth. It was a big barracuda. Oh. We weren't going to keep it anyway, so. Perfect. That Perfect. worked out. Real tight, real tight, real tight. Keep there. Keep your keep your keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Keep reeling. Oh, something just jumped right here. Yeah, he jumped right Was that that? Yeah. Right there. Oh. You're good. Keep a tip out, Brooke. Brooke, Brooke tip up, tip up. You're good. Let her come over that. Come on the back. There you go. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. So oh. sick, no, bro. Good. Yeah, you're on, huh? Oh man, what happened there, babe? Oh no. We got some bad odds today. What are we like? One for. Uh, don't, don't put that on YouTube. One, one for. For, YouTube. Like one water, for, one for five right now. Oh, no. Dead weight. Dead weight? Yeah. Foul hook, maybe. Wait, are you like live with that? Or is no are you live? <laughs> We're know. live right now! How are we live? I don't know how it works, man. I'm a fisherman. So he's saying we're not fishermen. Oh no. Brooke. No way. Brooke, Brooke, Brooke. Oh, oh hook's pushed pulled. Hook's pulled. I'm telling you, it looked foul hooked. Look, there he is. You want to take a whiff? As a kingfish. It smells like it was at least 30 See the pounds. Slime. <laughs> Today's just watch Patrick and Brandon reeling all the fish. Yeah. 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 Nice job, boys. You gonna cook this, Victor? Yes. You're gonna eat it? Oh, if you cook it, I'll eat it. I'm oh, there eat we go. Food. I've never ate kingfish. Not a lot. What? Never, never ate kingfish. Never ate kingfish. I'm gonna make you a believer. Kingfish. Perfect eating size. And we got a uh, pretty nasty storm coming in, so I don't know how much longer we'll be fishing, but. Brooke says she wants to fish through this storm. I don't know about that. <laughs> big cold front coming through. Yeah, last week we were out here and a big storm came through and those things, a boat actually capsized offshore, 34 foot venture. You guys might've heard about it in the news. Do not take those storms lightly. They can really mess up your day. All right, jumping into today's video. So. Uh, Patrick and Brandon are both coming over for dinner. Now, you guys know me and I'm all about cooking everything the ocean has to offer. I don't turn my nose up to anything. Now, Patrick says that he's never had kingfish before. So I got some big shoes to fill because kingfish is a lot of people's kind of like fear, especially in South Florida. Now, I'm not saying everywhere. Personally, I love kingfish, but today's mission is to really wow Patrick and Brandon, who I don't think eat too much kingfish, but we're about to change their minds. I'm going to pan sear the kings with the skin on. If you guys have never tried this, I've made it a bunch. It is so delicious. It really brings out the flavor of the fish and it brings out a, a, a texture and a note that you're not really accustomed to with fish with, which is crispy skin. So the first thing we're gonna do though, so we don't want our skin to curl up when we uh, cook it, we're just gonna lightly score it, okay? We're just gonna score it about three times. That's gonna prevent the kingfish skin from curling up, which I'm sure you've probably seen at some point in your life. Now, I'm not gonna overly season these fish because I really want the kingfish to shine and I want them to taste the true nature of the fish. So, generous amount of salt though. And one thing I will note, if you're trying to get crispy skin on fish, you better make sure those bad boys are completely dry. Nothing ruins a nice sear like moisture. So these have been padded dry and I let them chill out in the air at room temperature for a little bit as well. Salt, ground black pepper, garlic powder, that is all you need. That's like the trifecta. You guys see me use garlic a lot. I like garlic, what can I say? Can't get mad at me for it. Oh, now we're gonna, gonna do, get mad at you. Well, I know there's gonna be some comments. All you do is use garlic powder. Now we're not gonna get the salt shaker dirty, right babe? Right. Salt. Do not be afraid of salt. It's not gonna kill you. The important thing is to drink a lot of water. 
What? Why are you giggling? I don't know. Well, too much salt is in can kill you. Well, too much salt can kill you if you're uh, hypertensive. I'm not giving out medical advice, by the way. I'm just saying. Look at these bad boys. Blackfin tuna, bled out, looks beautiful, no bloodline. We're going to sear this. I just want to comment on this natural lighting we got going on. It's it, pretty nice. Spin, spin the plate for us. Ooh, it looks pretty wow, good, doesn't it? Wow, look at that. Tell me your mouth isn't watering. Hit that like button right now if you guys haven't already. I'm going to plug the second channel again. If, if you guys don't know, I did start a cooking channel. So if you guys enjoy these catch clean cooks, you want to support the cooking part, and you guys are just interested in cooking and seafood, I'm going to have it linked below as well as on the screen here. For now, it's just my name. I don't have like a channel name or anything. But one thing Brooke and I did the other day is uh, I seared tuna a bunch of different ways, like 10 different ways. And one of our favorite ways was blackened which we've, we've done black and tuna before, but never kind of just black and seared. Homemade black and seasoning. We're gonna start out with salt, black pepper. So we got some chili powder. Normally I don't think chili powder goes in uh, black and seasoning, but I love chili powder and it's really gonna go with the theme of this dish. There's so much cilantro in today's, in today's meal. It's like in three of the four things I'm making. And I think chili powder just goes so well with cilantro. Garlic powder. So everything except the salt and pepper, I'm pretty much doing equal parts. Maybe we'll do a little bit of less of the oregano. Oregano is a strong herb, don't want to overdo that. We'll use our sniffer. Coriander, do some coriander. I don't think coriander goes in black and seasoning as well usually. Basically you're just making your own seasoning blend. Sure, why not? Onion, whoa, oh, onion, onion, onion powder, Vic, onion powder. Onion powder, thyme, paprika. Love the color of paprika. Mmm, smell that. Give that a sniff. What do you guys think? You got? Are you guys approve? Comment below. You approve? These are the top loins. These are the loins I prefer to use when searing. We're gonna season now. Every single side, and that's why it's important to use the same plate. You know what? Let's just do a little bit of that and just kind of massage it in there. Fish is prepared. Now check this out. We're gonna whip up a little mango salsa. We got some diced cucumbers, mango, red onion, some cherry tomatoes, a little bit of jalapeno, and then this little concoction I whipped up. This is the juice of two limes, garlic, ginger, cilantro, brown sugar, and fish sauce. This stuff, this is some good stuff. This is very fragrant and flavorful. So we're gonna pour this right into our salsa. And that's just gonna help marry all those flavors together. And I'm not gonna do any salt for now because the fish, so fish sauce is actually really salty. This is just going with the fish on the plate. All right, so we're gonna whip up a little cilantro lime rice. We got our basmati rice. I'm trying to do a little chipotle copycat. We'll do about a quarter cup of olive oil, the juice of half a lime, a ton of cilantro, because you can never have too much, and salt. Do you like to be called Pat or Patrick? Uh, I don't really know. Patrick. I feel like people don't call me by my name. I feel like most people don't really call me by my name. You're 31 years old, you don't know what you like to be called yet? Big Chipotle guy Ooh. right here. It does smell like a lot like Chipotle. He doesn't knowingly know if he's ever had kingfish. Why is it so dark? I don't, I don't know. This what is are you literally... doing here? What's going on here? <laughs> this is literally the darkest kingfish we've ever filleted. But... Is, is this a good thing or a bad thing, you think? It doesn't matter, man. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah. It all turns white in the end. Yeah. Once it's cooked, it's all gonna be white. Stainless steel pan, real hot. We got some peanut oil. We're gonna just shallow pan fry, pan sear, whatever you wanna call it, our kingfish. You want crispy fish skin, the key, piping hot oil, no moisture, and you're gonna put your fish skin side down and cook it until your fish is crispy. Sometimes you cook it two thirds of the way on the skin side, sometimes seven eighths. The whole point is if you go to flip it, you gotta make sure that the skin is not sk sticking. Also depends on how thick your filet is, but don't touch it. Just let it sit there for at least three to four minutes. It's not gonna burn as, use as long as you use enough oil and it is going to be so delicious. All right, Brandon Let's just showed up only an hour late, but we'll leave that at that. Excited, man, this looks great already. Oh, it was like black. It looks like tuna. Oh, like, what is that? Woo! We're gonna leave it in the pan. 
And this is why you use stainless steel pans and we're gonna stick it in the oven. That fish will continue to cook on that pan with all that oil. So now we got our non-stick pan right here. A good amount of our peanut oil. We're gonna let this heat up on the non-stick real quick. Straight into the peanut oil. No more than 30 seconds on each side. Now we flip. All right, and that's it. So take a look at the inside of there. Look at this. <laughs> that is why we do not cut, cook it a lot. 15, 20 seconds on each side. It should be a sin that's a tuna to we do caught anymore. Day, right? Yeah, this is the tuna you caught right here. Right there. In the flesh, less right than 24 there. hours right old. I'm trying to make it fancy for you guys. This looks insane right now. We do what I'm going for. You said, <laughs> you said you wanted crazy. I'll come with every night. All right. Check that out. You get some of your crispy skin Ooh, yeah, kingfish. That the, honestly, it looks really good. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it's gonna be good, I tell you. You get a little bit of salsa going on right there. Some of that. Here's my spoon. I feel like I'm at a restaurant. I haven't been in a restaurant in so long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's the first plate. What? Look at this. I gotta, gotta grab this. Wow. Sorry, this place not as pretty. Thank you very much. You can sit that down. tuna is insane. Is it? Insane. So I've really been waiting to do this. You guys see us with Brooke's parents, my dad, and obviously parents are always gonna like stick up for their kids and their son-in-laws. But since the whole disease that we show we won't talk about on YouTube is going around, we, we've been kind of avoiding having people over. But it's gonna be nice to get some other perspectives today. Beautiful plate in here too. I can guarantee that Brandon has ate a lot of fish, so. No, that is 100% the biggest thing. I'm super, super picky with all the fish that I eat. Always really? gotta be iced very, very well. Um, haven't had some kingfish in quite some time, but you know, we're gonna try it today. It looks, looks delicious. This video doesn't have any cleaning in it, right? No, no cleaning. So Victor was actually filleting the fish today and I wasn't there, but he said he had a bunch of camera issues and the camera ended up not working, so there's no cleaning in this video. But this kingfish meat, just on the plate, was like the darkest kingfish meat I've ever seen. Like, normally it's pretty like white, gray, but this was like really dark, but it still tastes good. It's white now. It yeah. turned white. Victor Definitely. was correct in his theory of Definitely cooking it. Is. With that salsa, it come, like with the salsa and a bite of the fish and stuff, is really good. Cilantro rice, everything's delicious for sure. I mean, you would never know that it's a kingfish unless someone told you. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you really want it. I don't know if I'm gonna start keeping kingfish, but I, <laughs> I'm totally down to come over and have Victor cook kingfish. So you like it? Yeah, no. It's, so it's, <laughs> at the end of the day, I mean, if the chef knows what he's doing, he can basically turn anything that's, no, that's for skeptical sure. into good. The chef mm -hmm. definitely knows what he's doing. Yeah. That's right. You should start like a cooking channel or something. <laughs> <laughs> Like it below. <laughs> I thought I burnt it a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. I'm a big fish skin guy. Oh my god. I'm telling you guys, I don't know if they like it as much as me, but fish skin is just. It should like, like I said, it's a sin to overcook tuna. It should be a sin to take it off. Snapper, kingfish, mackerel skin is so good. It's got so much flavor. It's a whole uh, different layer of texture. You get the crispiness. Mmm. That's good stuff. Would you eat kingfish again? <laughs> if I cooked it. Yeah, no, I mean, if you want to cook it, I'm down. Like anytime I'll, I'll catch kingfish, I'll throw it in the cooler, I'll bring it over and drop it off on your porch and just come back a couple hours later, you know? Like, <laughs> just let me know and make sure it's on ice. Yeah, no, it'll be on ice, 100%. Anytime we got an extra snake laying around, might have to donate. But I mean, you're definitely gonna, you're gonna agree that the smaller kingfish are the, the more edible, right? Of course, yeah. 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 100%. percent I mean, it goes with almost any fish. Yeah. You know, the smaller they are, usually the sweeter, the more tender the meat is. And so thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Patrick, for uh, hey, having us all anytime. on the boat. Yeah. Let's go tomorrow. Yeah, right. Let's do it. <laughs> um, 
So seriously, thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching, for commenting, for subscribing, for liking. And if you guys haven't liked it, hit the thumbs up button. And um, like I said, cooking channel is live in the description box below. I'm gonna be making a really epic tuna burger recipe for you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Babe, for all your help. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.